Okay, here's a slightly more interesting derivation that uses auxiliary assumptions. Suppose we're trying to derive the sentence p and not q arrow not r. And we're going to try to derive this from two primary assumptions. The first one's going to be if not q then a, and the second one's going to be a then not p. These are our primary assumptions. Okay, as always, we begin by asking ourselves the following question. If I look at the sentence I'm trying to derive and call that the target sentence, I ask myself, does the target sentence appear as a component sentence anywhere in my primary assumptions? And here the answer is obviously no. So a good strategy to pursue is to try to find a way to finish our derivation by introducing the main logical connective in this sentence. So in this example, if I'm sort of thinking ahead to the very end of my derivation, what I'm thinking of is that down here I'm going to have my target sentence, of course, right beside the leftmost scope line. And the justification for this last line is going to be that I'm in, I have introduced a conditional. And the reason, again, for thinking that that's going to be my last step is that this target sentence does not appear anywhere in my uh, primary assumptions. So since I'm anticipating that my last step to get this sentence is going to be a conditional introduction, I know that I have to have as my first step an assumption which is going to be the assumption I need for the conditional introduction, namely I need to assume P and not Q. And so that already determines that the very next thing that I have to do, the very first thing I have to do in my derivation is assume the antecedent of the conditional and assume P and not Q. Because if I can then derive from P and not Q the sentence not R, then that's going to mean that I can write down the sentence that is this last line here, which is what I'm trying to do. And so now we just change the, the question uh, and adjust it by saying the following. My job now becomes to try to derive the sentence not R from any assumptions that I'm allowed to use. And these include the primary assumptions, but also this auxiliary assumption that I'm making for the purposes of introducing the material conditional. So what I need to ask is, does not R appear as a component in any of the sentences that I have access to? And these include my secondary assumption, P and not Q, this one and this one, my two primary assumptions. And when I look at those three that I've just highlighted, none of them contain not R. And that's kind of interesting because they don't even contain R. So how am I going to be able to derive not R if I didn't even have R? Well, this doesn't have to be as puzzling as it seems, especially if we remember, especially if we remember that the sentence that we're trying to derive now, which is not R, is the negation of R. And since it doesn't appear anywhere in my assumptions or sentences that I have access to, I should try to get it by introducing the negation. Because if I could introduce that negation to R, then I would be able to derive that sentence. And that actually does a lot for us, because it tells us what our next assumption is going to be. If this sentence, not R, is going to be something that I can write down as a result of negation introduction. When I look at the rule for negation introduction, I see that it begins with an assumption, and the assumption is going to be R. So this assumption I'm going to make for the purposes of negation introduction, whereas the above assumption right above it I made for the purposes of conditional introduction. All right, so now what we're trying to figure out is how do I complete this part of the proof or the derivation here? 
where I'm trying to use all of the assumptions which are accessible to me to derive not R. Now, to be really clear about this, the assumptions that are accessible to me when I'm trying to do some derivation work in here are these ones, R, P and not Q, A then not P, and not Q then A. I can use any of those four sentences to try to complete this derivation. And I know that to apply the negation introduction rule, what I need to do in this part here is derive some sentence and its negation. Now in this particular derivation, you might not immediately see what that sentence is that we're trying to get so that we can have the sentence and the negation. But one of the things that you might notice is that I have here as part of this assumption the letter P, the sentence P. And its negation appears somewhere else in one of the other sentences. So P and the sentence not P appear in the sentences that I have access to so I can get to them by eliminating the mean logical connectives of those sentences. Getting P is easy, deriving P is easy because I can just eliminate the conjunction in one step. Deriving not P is just a little bit more complicated because I can't do it in one step since this is a conditional sentence, but I can get not P if I have A. And once you realize that, you can finish your derivation by working your way forward through it uh, like this. So this is going to be line 3. Line 3 just is going to be that assumption so that we eventually can write down our material conditional. Uh, line 4 is going to be that assumption, R, so we can do the negation introduction. And now what I'm going to try to do is in here, I'm going to try to derive P and also not P. The first part of that is super simple because, oops, sorry about that. Let me go back to that. Uh, the first part of that is super simple because I can just write down the letter P right away as coming from line 3 by conjunction elimination. And now if I have not Q, which I can get from line 3 by conjunction elimination, I can use not Q and this sentence to get A. And once I have A, I can get not P. So let's back up just a bit. Go nice and slow. So name 7 is going to be A, and that comes from 6 and 1. Okay, it's just an application of the conditional elimination rule. So let's do that. Let's put that in our notation. Line 7 comes from 1 and 6 by conditional elimination. And then line 8 is going to be not P. And we get that because we have the antecedent of this conditional. So I can use lines 1 and 7 and conditional elimination. Now what I've done here is beneath the scope of R, I have derived both P and its negation. So using the negation introduction rule, I can indeed write down not R. So line 9 comes from lines 4 through 8 by negation introduction, and then line 10 comes from lines 3 through 9 by conditional introduction. And that's how you can think your way forwards and backwards to determine which assumptions you have to make. And remember, the assumptions you make are always determined by the rule you're going to apply.